Hello, I'm Stacy Davidson. And I'm Julia Troche. Our talk is entitled, Luminous Beings Are We, Force Ghosts and Ahu. Though numerous studies have shown that using popular media in the classroom can bring great benefits to student learning, retention of information and enjoyment, this approach has yet to be fully embraced by the academy and within the field of Egyptology. We argue that popular culture and real or imagined realities, such as augmented reality or the imagined Star Wars universe, can help both students and scholars explore remote ancient concepts and practices in ways that are more approachable and produce more creative thinking than lectures lacking such media. Star Wars then can be used as a tool or lens through which we can explore ideas historically situated in ancient Egypt such as the spirit-like concept of the Auk. Whereas the Auk is entirely unknown to most audiences, Star Wars is well known around the world. Studies have shown that students learn information easier when what they are learning is related to something they're already familiar with. In addition, the opportunity for opening new avenues of research into a historical concept such as the Auk can be facilitated through close examination of the concept of force ghosts in Star Wars. Inquiry and critical analysis inspired by the vehicle of sci-fi fandom can breathe new life into historical investigations while improving access to educational opportunities. The comparison between Star Wars and ancient Egypt is not random. The Star Wars universe calls upon ancient Egyptian imagery explicitly. For example, Star Wars Clone Wars includes Egyptian motifs such as the Sith Pyramid and Holocron, as well as the Nemi's headdress and kilt-wearing Mugans. For the purposes of our talk, we are restricting our sample set from the ever-expanding Star Wars universe to these you see here, the original trilogy, episodes 4, 5, and 6, A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi, and two animated TV series, Star Wars Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. First, let's define force and force ghost. What is the force? According to Obi-Wan Kenobi, quote, the force is what gives a Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us. It binds the galaxy together, unquote. In the Clone Wars, it is explained that the living force is present in all living beings. And when something dies, they pass into the cosmic force. A force ghost or force spirit is the auditory or visual manifestation of the identity of a powerful force wielder who appears after death to other force sensitives. Such an individual had prior to death been resigned to mortal sacrifice for a higher purpose and had dedicated their lives to the rigorous training necessary to exist after the living force leaves their bodies. They have all also trained apprentices. The manner of death is at the hands of a practitioner of the dark side of the force or near a location strong with the dark side of the force. They are then able to retain their individuality upon joining the cosmic force. Force ghosts cannot corporeally intervene in mortal affairs, but counsel, protect, exert their will or prophecy. Though not exactly ghosts themselves, the ancient Egyptian Auk was a spiritual aspect of the dead written with a hieroglyph of the plumed ibis and literally meaning, quote, effective one, the Auk was the social agent of the deceased who interacted with the living to cause harm or provide aid. The corpus known as the letters to the dead, which are extant from the old kingdom through the late period, that's about 2700 to 332 BCE, make this explicit, invoking the Auk as the one who can act on behalf of the requests of the living. There are many similarities and notable differences between force ghosts and Ahu. Ak is singular, Ahu is plural. Here we explore only a few due to time. Specifically, we consider the process of becoming an Ak or force ghost, the relationship between force ghosts, Ahu and place, and how the Ahu and force ghosts were accessed or experienced by the living. Though Star Wars is familiar to many, we would like to introduce the main characters of relevance. From the original trilogy, Obi-Wan Kenobi, also known as Ben Kenobi, Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, also known as Anakin Skywalker, and Yoda. From the Clone Wars, Qui-Gon Jinn. From Star Wars Rebels, Kanan Jarrus, also known as Caleb Doom, 
and Hera Syndulla. These characters will demonstrate themes relating to the three areas of our investigation of forced ghosts and the Afu, becoming, place, and access. In both ancient Egypt and within the Star Wars universe, not everyone becomes an Ach or forest ghost simply by dying. One must become these entities. In episode four, A New Hope, Obi-Wan Kenobi becomes a forest ghost upon his death at the hands of Darth Vader. Since Obi-Wan is the first Jedi the audience is introduced to, his death sets the framework through which subsequent Jedi deaths are measured. It is clear from his words with Darth Vader at the beginning of their duel, quote, if you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine, unquote. That Obi-Wan knew his death was imminent and that, by engaging in the fight, he had accepted his outcome. The audience later learns in Star Wars The Clone Wars that the first Jedi to become a Force ghost was Qui-Gon Jinn, a character not introduced until 1999's Episode I of Phantom Menace. The audience witnesses Qui-Gon Jinn's death in his duel with Darth Maul, Unlike Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon's body does not vanish after death. However, as the Star Wars saga unfolded, it was clear that not all Jedi become Force ghosts at death. In the sixth season of The Clone Wars, a multi-episode arc emerges in which Yoda is contacted by a manifestation of Qui-Gon Jinn. He is not fully a Force ghost, yet Qui-Gon is able to use the cosmic force to communicate auditorially and telekinetically with Yoda. The method by which a Jedi Knight can become a Force ghost is revealed to Yoda by mysterious priestesses on an unnamed planet. Yoda must pass a series of trials focused on conquering elements both internal and external, after which the priestesses would allow him to receive the training necessary to retain his individuality after death and exert his will. In a similar manner, not all ancient Egyptian dead received Ach status in death. It had to be achieved. Yannick describes the Ach as, quote, the transfigured, efficacious, glorious, or blessed dead, end quote. He further explains, again a quote, this posthumous status was not reached automatically. Human beings had to be admitted and become transfigured or elevated into this new state. The dead became blessed or effective Ahu only after mummification and proper burial rites were performed on them, and after they had passed through the obstacles of death and the trials of the underworld, end quote. Not unlike the Yoda story in the Clone Wars, whose transfiguration into a force ghost was determined by a set of trials, the Aku exist as a result of passing through obstacles of death and trials of the underworld. While the description of Book of the Dead Spell 125, in which the ancient Egyptian deceased's heart is weighed against the feather of Ma'at, that is truth and order, may feel confusing and remote, by teaching this process alongside the trials of Yoda and the balance inherent in the force, these ancient concepts become more relatable. Where a force ghost can appear is less a factor of place and more a facet of the strength of the personal connection between the force ghost and a force sensitive person. Force sensitives are people who are attuned to the force. Primarily, those identified as force sensitives in the Star Wars universe are affiliated with the Jedi Order. In the original trilogy, Obi-Wan is the only force ghost to be seen and heard. The recipient is Luke Skywalker. The great Jedi Master Yoda also communicates with Obi-Wan in The Empire Strikes Back, and his force ghost is seen in the presence of Obi-Wan and Anakin Skywalker's force ghosts at the end of Return of the Jedi. Those who are not force sensitive appear oblivious to force ghosts, as is the case at the end of Return of the Jedi, where none of the victory celebrants on Endor, other than Luke, see three force ghosts standing in their midst. Although personal connection is the primary tether for force ghosts, specific planets or locations are also said to have strong force energy, including Dagobah, where Yoda is found to be living in The Empire Strikes Back. Mortis, a Clone Wars planet through which the entire force of the universe flows, and an unnamed force planet where five priestesses who hold the secrets of retaining one's identity after death can be found. While the tomb may have been the primary locus for engagement with the dead, and perhaps more specifically with the Aku, the Aku could affect the living regardless of place. Just like with the force ghosts, it seems as though the personal connections between the living and the Aku was the most important variable. 
The tomb as a focal point is apparent in a letter to the dead known as the Brooklyn Papyrus. It reads, Hersa Iset, son of Tenem, son of Noctamut, recite it before him at the tomb of Tenem. Here, the tomb is clearly the locus of this invocation. So in addition to being relatable teaching tools, these comparisons are also useful for scholars in that they require us to approach the material from different angles and ask more diverse questions. For example, the existence of the four sensitives in the Star Wars universe with no obvious equivalent in ancient Egypt does raise the question of whether certain ancient Egyptians were seen as more in tune with the supernatural realm and that this quality may explain why certain dead became objects of popular devotion and invocation in ancient Egypt. Force ghosts appear most often unbidden to force sensitive individuals. As they are one with the cosmic force, they are privy to information ordinary mortals do not have and have their own missions and agendas to pursue. They can be called upon, but sometimes these pleas generate no response. In season four of Star Wars Rebels, the character of Kanan Jarrus provides intriguing clues into the nature of force ghosts and the ability of non-force sensitives to encounter them. As Kanan's training was never completed and he was not initiated into the training to become a force ghost after death, it seemed unlikely that his death would be notable. However, he embodied the true spirit of the Jedi, had knowledge of his imminent death in enemy combat, knew he was sacrificing for a noble cause and accepted his fate. In a touching post-mortem scene, he appears in the form of a force ghost to resistance leader Hera Syndulla. She is not force sensitive and cannot hear or see him, but he places his luminous hand on her shoulder and she puts her hand where his would have been. The Aku could interfere in the lives of the living in both positive and negative ways. For example, causing illness or helping with inheritance or health issues. The inscriptions written upon tomb walls from the Aku to the living, known as appeals to the living, further cement the Aku's agency and literally gives voice to their desires and threats. The Aku may show up when they decide to, but they can also be called upon by the living. The letters to the dead make this clear that the living can call upon the Aku directly for aid and assistance. But another way in which the ancient Egyptians accessed the Ak was through dreams. Two letters to the dead, the so-called Papyrus of Meru and Winti's Stila, that is the one on the back of a Stila that's now in the Michael C. Carlos Museum, make explicit the practice of incubation, that is accessing the supernatural through dreams. This is not unlike the meditation Yoda uses to access the force. The stila reads, remove the infirmity of my body. Please become Ak before me that I might see you fighting on my behalf in a dream. In all these cases, the personal relationship, be it kinship or professional or regional ties between the living and the Aku seem integral to their access. So here again, the comparison becomes useful, not only to the student, but to the researcher as well. So much oral culture and auditory experiences were lost in antiquity. If the forced ghosts could appear not only as apparitions similar to the awk and dreams, but also as auditory experiences, it could perhaps be fruitful to consider auditory evidence of accessing the awk and the ancient Egyptian hereafter as an additional sensory mode about Star Wars and its revitalization of the traditional cowboy narrative, Robert Bulla and Stephanie Pinnegar highlight how, quote, an old story became new. Stories of learning to teach, representing different but similar scenes, situations, themes, and points of view become fresh when told through new eyes. We still recognize the story, but we engage it differently, unquote. Indeed, in the classroom or any other learning environment, Star Wars can help make the Aku more accessible by bringing ancient Egypt into our contemporary popular culture and sci-fi landscapes. It adds humor and fun to the learning experience, heightens students' retention of information and investment in the course material, and impacts overall enjoyment. Furthermore, as researchers, it broadens our perspectives and encourages us to ask new questions and consider different angles of investigation. We'd like to thank you, the audience, for your time and attention, and a special thanks to those who provided support for this project. 
May the force be with you.